So welcome everybody. To, oh, thank you. Um, welcome everybody to this global Poisson, the Eastern Time uh, session. So today we are very happy to have uh, Liao Xuanyi uh, from Tsinghua University, Taiwan, National Tsinghua University in Taiwan. Uh, so he will be speaking on homotopy fiber product of manifolds. Thank you for the introduction. Uh... I'm happy I have this chance to share my research. And then I will talk about homotopy fiber part of manifolds. So this is basically about derived differential geometry. And let me start with a uh, oversimplified introduction to derived differential geometry. So basically derived geometry is concerned with space with singularities. And there are algebraic geometry version and the differential geometry version. Algebraic geometry version appeared a little bit earlier than differential geometry version. And uh, in for differential geometry version, there are several approach to this derived differential geometry. And uh, most of the approach based on something called C infinity rings. And uh, for some reason, we decide to avoid, avoid C infinity rings and divide a, a different approach. And uh, our approach to this problem is like, uh, we basically use uh, vector bundles and uh, vector bundles and the sections, geodesics, and the sum are infinity arch bus. So let me introduce uh, our approach. And uh, before, I, before we start, let me start with a, a very elementary theory. So the basic, basically I will talk about fiber product. I will try to, um, show you a way to study fiber products. And uh, fiber by fiber product, I just mean the most naive fiber products. Suppose we are given X, Y, Z, there are three manifolds and the two smooth maps, F and the Gs. And then we can form the most naive uh, fiber product like this. So this thing is just like say theoretical fiber product. The problem is this space is not necessarily a manifold. It is, it is just a topological space. And, uh, and we know that if one of the map F over G is a submersion, then this fiber product becomes a manifold. So this is like a, a theory in basic differential geometry codes. <laughs> so let me show you like a couple of examples of fiber products. So first example is intersection of manifolds. Suppose X and Y are submanifolds of a big manifold M. Then the intersection, the set theoretical intersection of X and Y can be considered as the fiber product. I just, I just used the two inclusion, two embedding map and I do the fiber product using these two embedding map. Then as I said, it becomes, it can be identified with the set, set theoretical intersection. So intersection, in the section of some manifolds can be considered as fiber products. Another example is the zero set of uh, functions. So zero set of a uh, function can be considered as the intersection of the graph of these functions and uh, the zeros. So it is a, uh, it is also, it also can be considered as fiber products like this kind of fiber product. And the two maps are the, the this map and the, the zeros. 
And uh, so these are like two examples, two interesting examples of fiber products. And uh, today I want to show you a way to study fiber product use smooth objects. And our approach is basically resolve this fiber product, which might, might not be amenable by vector bundles and the sections. So this is a kind of outline of the talk. So first of all, I will introduce something we call quasi smooth derived manifold. And uh, this, by this, I just mean it is a, uh, I just mean a vector bundle plus a global section. And then I will construct, uh, I will show you a construction of homotopy fiber product. So as I said, fiber product of many, uh, fiber product of manifolds might not be a manifold. So we, we find a kind of replacement, smooth replacement of fiber product. And that's what I call homotopy fiber product here. And if I have enough time, I will explain the category structure behind this homotopy fiber product things. And then more precisely, we, I will explain this theory. The category of derived manifolds is a category of fiber objects. And uh, this, this, structure, this structure guarantees the, we, guarantees we have this homotopy fiber products. And here by derived manifolds, I mean finite dimensional bundles of curve and infinity one algebra of positive entities. Or you can think these as finite dimensional DG manifolds uh, with some degree restrictions on functions. Okay, so what do I mean by quasi smooth many uh, quasi smooth derived manifolds? So the basic idea is very pretty naive. So we want to we want to study singular space like uh, zero locus of uh, functions. This might might be very singular. So we just replace it by functions. So instead of study this crazy space, we just study these smooth functions and together with a big space. And a uh, more formal definitions like this, I, by quasi-smooth derived manifold, I mean a section, a vector bundle. It is a vector bundle together with a global section of this vector bundle. This, is, this thing is a kind of um, re replacement of the zero locus of this section. <laughs> and this, and uh, between quasi smooth derived manifold, we have more visions. And uh, by more vision, I just mean vector bundle maps, which commute with the given sections. That's what I mean by more vision between uh, quasi smooth vector, uh, quasi smooth derived manifolds. And uh, as, as we saw at the beginning of the talk, uh, the submersion is particularly important when we talk about fiber product. And uh, here by submersion, I mean the morphism. When I say a morphism is a submersion, I mean the, the base map is a submersion of manifolds. And uh, the bundle map, the fiber, each fiber is, uh, is subjective. And sometimes I think in the paper we say vibration. Uh, anyway, here I just mean uh, this is what I mean. Question? Yes. So uh, when you say the diagram commutes, there's one diagram with down arrows and another diagram with up arrows, and both of those diagrams commute? Yes. So, okay. yes. So this, uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I, I would have a question. Yes. Um, so where, 
I don't know, maybe, maybe that's going to come on the next on the next slide or so. But where is the where is this derived? Like so far, we just have a isn't this just a manifold with a vector bundle? Yeah, it is just a manifold with vector bundle. So uh, not, not like a vector bundle of uh, a chain complex of vector bundles or so? Or? Uh, so you want to see a chain complex? Uh, I'm not sure if this is what you are looking for. This kind of. Uh, okay, yeah. So okay, then then you're probably you're probably gonna get to it. So okay, I'll wait. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, then let me continue. So now I just start with a very naive idea. Just resolve the single the zero locus by this function together with the space. But when we when we do that, there are there there is a immediate problem. It, the immediate part is that there are too many space, too many this kind of thing with same zero locus. So we need a kind of occurrence relations. We need a certain notion of occurrence. And this is what uh, we call weak occurrence. And uh, so to define weak occurrence, I need to define tangent, uh, tangent complex. So a point in phase manifold is called classical locus or Moria Ganda locus if the if it is zero of this section of this given section. And suppose we have a classical locus, we consider the differential of this, the derivative of this uh, section. Uh, by that, I mean it's just a, the induced map on tangent space. And uh, then this is a tangent space of the total space. And then I, then I project to the fiber. And this is, uh, this is my differential of section. And then by tangent complex, I mean the two turn complex, this two turn complex. Uh, the first turn is this tangent space of base manifold at this classical locus. Uh, sorry. Uh, this. Uh, so this two turn complex. So the 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 first turn is this tangent space of base manifold at the classical locus P, and another the second turn is this um, fiber, and uh, the the co-boundary map is this differential of this given section. There there should be no zero. So there is no zero. And uh, by derived dimension, I mean the order characteristic of this tangent complex. In other words, the dimension of base manifold minus the rank of this vector bundle. And uh, a morphism, a morphism of my quasi smooth derived manifolds induces a culture map between tangent complexes. And now I'm ready to define weak occurrence. By weak occurrence, I mean uh, morphism. Weak occurrence is a morphism, which induces a bijection on classical loci. And uh, the tangent map, its tangent map is a quasi isomorphism at each classical locus. This is what I mean by weak occurrence. So on the classical locus, it is a bijection, and uh, uh, on tangent space, the tangent complex is it is quasi isomorphic, and that's weak. That's what we mean by weak occurrence. So in particular, if we have a weak occurrence between quasi-smooth derived manifold, then they have the same derived dimension. 
derived dimension is the, the order characteristic of uh, tangent complex. And if the two tangent complex are quasi isomorphic, uh, then they have the same order characteristic. And this, the following example is a, a nice case. So we say a section is a regular section if this, if this differential is this differential of this, if this differential is subjective, then we say this is a regular section. If a section is a regular, then the zero locus is zero locus is a manifold of dimension m minus rank. And this is a exactly the same as derived dimension. And moreover, the, the zero, we can consider a manifold as a quasi simple derived manifold just by, con just by considering it as a zero rank vector bundle, zero rank vector bundle. And the, the natural math from this manifold to the given uh, the, this quasi smooth derived manifold is a weak equivalence. So in a nice case, uh, it is weak equivalent to the, the expected, uh, expected manifold. Okay, and uh, here is a, a kind of functions on this quasi smooth derived manifold. So given a quasi smooth derived manifold, uh, by that I mean vector bundle together with a section, we can, uh, we can consider function algebra functions on this space. And uh, by that, I mean, uh, Commutative differential graded algebra, this commutative differential graded algebra. And uh, the degree assignment is like this. So the function part is degree zero. And uh, this which one part is degree negative one, this is degree negative two, and so on and so forth. And uh, this, so this. Uh, this is just contraction. This is contraction with the given section. So this contraction becomes a degree one operator and the square is zero. Yeah, so it becomes a, a CDGA. And the amorphism of the quasi smooth derived manifold induces a morphism of CDGA between this, between this, this kind of functions. It's just poor back map. It's just poor back map. And the, the weak, the weak currents I just defined is actually same as the quasi smooth, a uh, quasi isomorphism of the CDGAs of the function. So these two are same. And this is a very quick introduction to quasi-systems derived manifold. Any questions? Then let me explain what our construction of homotopy fiber products. So homotopy, the idea of homotopy fiber products like this. So recall that uh, a fiber product of manifold might not be a manifold. So this fiber product, suppose X, Y, Z are manifolds and the arrows are smooth maps. And the fiber product of manifold might not be a manifold. But if one of the maps is a submersion, then the fiber product becomes a manifold. So the idea is like, then I just factorize one of the map. And I just factorize one of the map as a composition of uh, a vibration, uh, a submersion and a weak occurrence. So in a sense, this Y and the P are same space. And then I just replace, 
I want to replace a map by a submersion. And then I take fiber pada, I use this submersion to take fiber pada. In this way, I got a, I should get a smooth space. And in this idea, the problem is how, what is this P? How do I get how do I get this vectorization? So the the key is how 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 we can construct this P. So in order to construct this P, uh the there's a we first construct uh, the important case, the construct the P. For diagonal, uh, for the diagonal map. This is an important case. And our construction is like this. So here is a diagonal map. I want to factorize this as a composition of weak equivalence and the vibrations. So the our choice of this space, uh, it is a quasi-smooth derived manifold. So it is a vector bundle together with a section. And our, our base space is short, the space of short geodesics. And the, the total space is a space of uh, certain constants, a constant pace in, in the tangent bundle. And uh, the section is, is given by derivatives. And uh, the weak equivalence, this morphism is just constant pace, make a point to const the constant pace at this point. And the, the submersion are two evaluation maps. And let me let me show you more details. Let me explain more about this construction. So what do I mean by this short geodesics and the constant paces? So first of, first of all, we fix a connection. We fix a connection, and then we fix an open interval. Uh, which contains zero one, and uh, our pet, our PZ is this. Uh, this is base manifold, and uh, this is what I call short geodesics, and this is total space, a certain constant pace, and this is the relative. So the base manifold PZ is just the geodesics associated with this connection. So this, uh, yeah, we say short geodesics because we we just consider uh, we just fix a short inter uh, a fix a uh, one interval. And uh, and then the total space, this total space. So a fiber over this geodesic. So given a geodesic. A fiber over geodesics is uh, is a pace over this. So we have uh, this is our Z, and the A is a geodesics here, and I have T T T Z, and uh, then the my alpha uh, uh, alpha is here alpha is here. Alpha is a pace over alpha is a pace over a. So alpha is a pace over a. And uh, this is my alpha. Alpha is here. Alpha is pace over a. And it is a pace over a. And uh, such that the connection, the pullback connection. Uh, applied to alpha is equal to zero. So it is a kind of constant pace with respect to this connection. So in other words, if you trivialize this vector bundle, uh, this is the, this pullback vector bundle is a, a vector bundle over a uh, interval. So it is a trivial vector bundle. You can trivialize it by parallel transport of this connection. If you do that, this this alpha becomes a constant pace in that trivialization. Yeah, so that's what I mean by constant pace. 
So this is my total space. This is my total space. And uh, my section, I call it a D here. So the section, the section just maps A to its derivative. Because it's, it is geodesic, uh, geodesic satisfies this geodesic equation. So its the derivative is a constant pace. So this becomes this is this is a uh, this is a section. This is a section. And then I have this vectorization diagram. This vectorization diagram from Z to D times D is a diagonal map, and from Z to P Z is a constant pace, and the two P Z to Z times Z is the two evaluation map. This is how I, how we get this vectorization of diagonal map. Uh, I is a subset of, so I, I is equal to CD. So I is an open interval. And the zero one close interval is a subset of I. Because I, I use here, I use the evaluation map at zero and the one. So I require the open interval, the given open interval, this open interval has zero and the one. Okay, any other questions? And here is another description of my vectorization. So if you don't like test space, and I can give you another description. So what I said is same as this. So the uh, the base you can think as a base manifold as a tangent bundle. Well, precisely it, it is uh, actually a neighborhood of zeros of in this in this tangent bundle. And that the total space is the pullback bundle, pull, the pullback, the tangent bundle along the natural projection. This is the total space. And the section, section just map, uh, the base space is tangent bundle. So by VP, I mean a tangent vector at P. Map V to VV. That's a. Is there a potential issue with completeness? Uh, do you mean the exponential map? So here, exponential map is. I just. Uh, actually, I'm just looking at the neighborhood of zeros, where exp exponential is defined. So I don't look at like. Uh, uh, very long geodesics, just very short geodesics. So the uh, here, so this is another description of my my PZ. Yes, and uh, with this de description, the factorization becomes uh, like this. It maps P to zero P. This is the weak equivalence from Z to PZ. And uh, the, the submersion is given a tangent vector BP, it maps to one, there are two components. The first component is P, the natural projection. And the second component is the exponential map, exponential map. And because exponential map is local, uh, is the local diffeomorphism, so this is a uh, submersion. And uh, with this description, you can see it is actually uh, the vector bundle structure becomes very clear, and then you can compute. Uh, you can really do computation. So the and uh, I said this is a weak equivalence, and actually it's pretty easy to see. 
And uh, by weak equivalence, I mean the is uh, induced a bijection on zero locus. So the zero locus, uh, the on classical locus. So the classical locus, uh, the section is here. So classical locus means the this B, this is in the fiber, this B is zero. And this B is zero means the first B is also zero. So that means the zero section, uh, the zeros in tangent bundle. And the zeros in tangent bundle is same as, is same as C. The zeros in TZ is same as C. And uh, you also can compute the tangent complex. The tangent complex like this, this is the tangent complex of uh, Z. So this pi is tangent complex of Z. And uh, this pi is tangent complex of my PZ. And uh, this, this scene, so this thing, and uh, it's easy to check that this is a uh, quasi as a motion at each classical locus. So it, it is indeed a uh, 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 weak occurrence. Yes. And uh, this map is a vibration like what I explained, uh, basically uh, it's because the exponential map and this may be the vibration. Okay, so with this PZ, it's, uh, it's easy to construct the general case with PZ. So basically general case, so recall that what we want here to do, we want to factorize a given, a given Morbis, a given smooth map, uh, factorize this using quasi smooth derived manifold. And uh, in, by this, in this factorization, we should get a, a submersion. And then I use this submersion to do uh, fiber product. And uh, the first step was we factorize diagonal map. Now we want to factorize the general map. So in, for a general map y to z, I just factorize like this. I just take p to be pz. The pz is what we got for diagonal map and, and times y, pb, pz times y. So more precisely, p P is a quasi smooth derived manifold, and the base manifold is this. Total space is this, and the section is this. So the thing is, the when we when we got P Z, we got two we got submersion to Z times Z, and then we use one submersion to 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 do this fiber product. So this is a manifold. This is a manifold because the fiber product from Tz to Z is an exponential map. It is a submersion. So one, this map is a submersion. So this fiber product becomes a harness manifold. Yes. And uh, yeah, and uh, this, Space is just a vector bundle with fiber, with fiber here, fiber tangent space, and uh, just take ten uh, fiber product. You take fiber product. So I say yes. I I already said that. So the the base manifold is a manifold because in the Periods uh, in the in the construction of PZ, 
The map from T Z to Z is an exponential map. There are two maps. One is the natural projection, another uh, the second one is exponential map. And uh, both of them are submersion. I, I just use one of them to do this uh, vibration uh, fiber pattern. So it is a it is a uh, it is a submersion. So fiber pattern is a manifold. Yeah, this is how, how we get around the uh, G to G is, it is not, no, I found G, uh, where is my G? T, C, T, C. So the map is here. So T, G. 2z times c, the map is p and the uh, exponential p uh, vp, and this is a uh, uh, this is submersion because the tangent map of this part is the uh, I mean identity uh, and the tangent map of exponential map is also is also subjective, so it is uh submersion the tangent map is on two that's what i mean is it clear yeah by submersion i just mean tangent map is on two yeah it is local it is local it is local Uh, I don't need a complete list. I just take a neighborhood. It is local things. It is local things. Okay, where where was I? Uh, so okay, so I was constructing this P. So this P, I just took fiber product of P, Z, and the Y. And in this way, I can get a quasi-smooth derived manifold together with a weak equivalence and a, and a submersion. It's, and uh, you can check it easy that this, the kernel, uh, the zero set of this section is exactly the graph of the map from Y to Z. So it is same as y. So it is so this map is a uh, weekly currents. And uh, now I'm ready to construct the homotopy fiber part of manifolds. So now uh, so as I said, we factorize this part, and uh, then I took I used the uh, sum, uh, then I got a, a submersion. And I, then I used this submersion to do fiber product with X. So I just put one more X here. I just did this X fiber product. This part is my P in the previous vectorization. So this is my fi homotopy fiber product. It is a uh, it is a quasi smooth derived manifold. That that means it is a, a vector bundle together with a section. And uh, the thing is smoothness. So we get around the singularity by add this TZ. And the TZ from TZ to this 2Z, one is a natural projection, the other one is exponential map. So both of them are submersion. So when I do this, this part becomes a smooth manifold and the other with a submersion from this space to C. And so the, the whole fiber part is still a smooth manifold. And the total space is just some vector bundle with fiber, uh, tangent space as fiber. And at the, the section is a kind of obvious section. I just put one more V. And it's easy to uh, 
check that the zero, the classical locus of this quasi smooth derived manifold is the set theoretical fiber product. It is a theoretical fiber product. And uh, the derived dimension is what you might expect is the dimension of x plus dimension of y minus dimension z. It is same as the uh, it's same as the dimension of fiber product in good case. Uh, by good case, I mean I, I just wrote here. So suppose one of the map is already a submersion, then the fiber product is a manifold. Is a, it is it is a manifold, and then we have a in, inclusion map from this fiber product to the homotopy fiber product I constructed. And this it, in if this is a submersion, then this map it is, is a weak equivalence. So in good case, this is same as the fiber, the classical fiber product. Okay, so in here I I show uh, I show you uh, the example I mentioned at the, the beginning of the talk, the intersection, the case of intersection. So in the beginning of the talk, I said intersection can be considered as fiber product. I just use the two inclusion. Now X, Y are some manifolds of a manifold M. And I have two inclusion made from X, Y to M. And, uh, and I just use these two inclusion maps to do fiber product, then I can get say theoretical intersection. And now I just replace fiber product by homotopy fiber product and see what, what we get. And this is what I call the right intersection here. So by this, I just mean the homotopy fiber product of X and Y use the inclusion map. And, uh, According to my construction, this is uh, this is a uh, vector bundle together with a section. And uh, my base space, my base space is x times t m times y. And uh, this this space is a space. You can think this space as the space of short geodesics, which star from a point in X and end a point in Y. So it's a short geodesic from X to Y. You can consider this base space as this kind of, you can see this base space as short geodesics from X to Y. And this space can be considered as an open submanifold of the direct product, just consisting the the maps, uh, the the points, a pair of points which are sufficiently close to the set theoretical intersection. And uh, the fiber over a uh, fiber over these short geodesics is the. Uh, is the pace is the constant pace is over this short geodesics constant pace over the short geodesics so it is same as a uh, tangent space it's same as a tangent space and uh, the section is just given by the derivative the derivative is a section oh i i forgot to mention that this tc is just a formal symbol to denote the uh, uh, degree, but uh, we we don't have to worry about degree now because we just have one vector bundle now. Okay, so this is uh, my section. So this is a description of my derived intersection, and uh, the classical locus of my derived intersection is the set theoretical intersection. And the derived dimension of this derived uh, intersection is dimension of X plus dimension Y minus dimension M, which is the dimension of intersection in good case. So if X, Y intersect transversally, 
that's what I mean, mean by good case. Then the intersection becomes a manifold and the, 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 there's a natural map from this manifold to my derived, uh, derived intersection. And this map is a uh, weak occurrence. So in good case, these two, this, this derived intersection is same as the classical intersection. Any questions? Okay, then let me complete the theory. So now, I, now I'm I basically finish this uh, quasi smooth things and the homotopy five part of manifolds. And then the, what's the problem now? So there are some problems, there are some problems. So the, this homotopy fiber product, uh, I, what I show you is homotopy fiber product of manifolds. And you can also ask what is homotopy fiber product of derived quasi smooth derived manifolds. And uh, if you do, if you ask that question, then, um, then I need higher, even higher structures to answer that questions. So in other words, the category of quasi smooth derived manifold is not close on the homotopy fiber product. That's one theoretical question. So this is kind of incomplete in this sense. And another problem is weak equivalence. So I said I need a kind of equivalence relation, but weak equivalence is actually not necessarily invertible. So uh, there's no inverse, there's no inverse. So in order to get uh, equivalence, an actual equivalence relation, we, we actually need some higher structures. And uh, in the previous talk, I used the word quasi smooth derived manifold. And now I actually, I want to remove the word. I want to introduce what is derived manifold. So we were, we, we just extend, further extend this category of quasi smooth derived manifold to a larger, even larger category. And uh, that's what we call the category of derived manifolds. And this category of derived manifold uh, doesn't have the two problems I just mentioned. It is a category of fiber objects and these structures uh, guarantees that the guarantees the existence of homotopy fiber product and these uh, weak equivalences. Can one not use bundles or something similar to realize the inverse? Uh, use bundles. Uh, like stack case. Uh, so there are several approach to these things. So the Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one is your favor. So the the recurrence will be something like x, y. Then I have some big space, and then I have some two two equivalence like this. And the what is x, y, p? Here I use bundles. And uh, actually, I will use bundles of you know, infinity one algebra. You can use uh, digit manifolds. That also works. It, it, that thing, uh, uh, my bundles of you know, infinity one algebra is same as digit manifolds with certain degree restriction. And I try to keep this elementary, so I choose to use bundles. OK. And then I wanted to say what is a uh, category of fiber objects. So this is quite objects. Let me just go through it quickly. So it is a category with, together with two subcategories, which is a category of vibration and a category of weak equivalence. In our case, category of uh, this vibration. So that means we have two spatial mobilization, two spatial mobilization. One is called vibration, one is weak equivalence. And in our case, vibration is just submersion. A weak equivalence is what I defined. And uh, here, here are six axioms. 
and uh, the maybe the key axiom i think the most important axiom is this existence of test space objects so this is what i construct in the previous sections the keys i need to construct i need to find this kind of factorization for diagonal map and our axiom are like this pullback of vibration exists so this I hope this reminds you the basic property of manifold. When you have fiber products, if one of the map is a submersion, then the fiber product is a manifold. This is exactly what it says here. If you have vibration, and the pullback of vibration means the uh, fiber product, and one of the map is vibration. And then the, 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 in that case, the, the pullback exists, just says the fiber product is a manifold, so it's still in this category. And this is what this axiom says. So this axiom, I think, is a kind of has this axiom which characterize our situation. And this is what uh, people call category of fiber, uh, category of fiber object. It was introduced by Ken Brown. And in the axiom, I just say the factorize diagonal map. And actually this is in this guarantees we have factorization for arbitrary morphism. And this is a lemma by Campbell in the, his original paper. And uh, because we have factorization of arbitrary morphism and then the, our previous idea of homotopy fiber product just works. So in, in general, in such a category of fiber object, we can just use this thing to, to get a uh, homotopy fiber product. This PZ is the factor, right? Uh, factor, right? PZ is this PX. So I just take ZZ and uh, this PZ is guaranteed by axiom. And uh, this PZ has two, has a uh, vibration to Z times C. So it has two, five, two vibration here. So I can do this fiber product, and this this exists in this category, and this is a homotopy fiber product. This is a general recipe for homotopy fiber product. So this is a kind of general general recipe behind uh, behind the previous construction. This is a general recipe. <clears throat> okay, and what is my category? So my category is actually a category of derived manifold. By, K, by derived manifold, I mean a uh, manifold together with a gradient vector bundle is a finite dimensional positively gradient vector bundle. And a lambda is not, now it's not just a section, it is a, becomes a sequence of map, sequence of bundle maps like this. And it is degree one vector bundle maps from K, uh, S, L to L. And this is uh, curve LNT1 structure. This is a curve LNT1 structure. By that, I mean you can use this lambda k to generate uh, to generate a call derivation, generate a call derivation. And uh, it, this call derivation is called homological. Uh, that means QQ is equal to zero, as this is the uh, LN infinity axiom. And the Morbison of derived manifold now it becomes a Morbison of LN infinity one, a Morbison of LN infinity one algebra. So that means it, it is a sequence of map. It is a sequence of map from SKL to L prime. And together it generates a called algebra Morbison. It generates called algebra Morbison from between this SL section. And uh, it commutes. The Morbison axiom says it commute with the LN infinity structures. And actually, here's a small remark. The degree restriction implies that we, we actually have only finite, finite brackets and the finite maps in the Morbison. And here are a few uh, the actual equations in the ion infinity axioms. So the so I said curve 
uh, so the the AI infinity structure start with zero. The lambda zero is called curvature because the it has this equation, and this this is a kind of Bianchi identity. This is Bianchi identity, second Bianchi identity. So and that's why this called curve. This when this lambda zero is not zero. And this is called curve, curve around infinity, curve around infinity. Yeah. And uh, all these other things. So this is a kind of uh, co boundary map up to some curve, so up to some curvature. And this is uh, Jacobi identity up to some homotopy. Yeah. And uh, the easy case, the case of manifold just take the zero rank bundle. And the, the, if we just have one bundle, then that's the quasi smooth case we I explain. And the weak equivalence and vibration can be defined similarly. So we can def, we, we still have this uh, differential of curvature and it is from TM to L1. And then we can continue L1 to L2 by the uh, lambda one, the first, the first bracket. And then the whole thing becomes a co uh, chain complex. And this is a tangent complex. And as before, the derived dimension is the order characteristic of this tangent complex. And the Morbison, and the Morbison induces a a uh, culture map between tangent complexes. So we have tangent map. And weak equivalence just means what I said in the previous section, induces bijection on classical loci and the, the tangent map is uh, quasi isomorphism for each classical locus. And the vibration means the base map is a submersion. The, the first map is subjective. So with this structure, weak currents and the vibration. Now I have a category with two spatial movies and weak currents and the vibration. And uh, I, the, our main theory is that uh, this category with these two spatial type of movies is a category of fiber object, this this theory guarantees so that this means we have vectorization. This means we have homotopy fiber product, and we have PZ. We have PZ. We have this vectorization for each um, for each diagonal map, and the, and this vectorization, we, we construct this vectorization explicitly by short geodesic. So the, the previous construction by short geodesic can be generalized. And I mean, in our paper, we do that for general case. Yes. And uh, the, another problem I mentioned at the, uh, in a few pages before is this equivalence problem. So now the, I can describe when, when we consider the two, de, two derived manifold are equivalent if they are isomorphic in homotopy category. And uh, that means there, in this case, that means if there exists a third bit derived manifold and uh, with two trivial vibration onto the two uh, given derived manifold. And uh, this means this is, this is equivalent as uh, isomorphic in homotopy category. Homotopy category means we just uh, inverse input formal inverse of each weak equivalence and uh, complete as a category. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Okay, Can so I, there are some uh, questions. Yeah. Uh, There's a question in the chat. Yes. So let me. Can you? Uh, 
can I combine with higher differential stacks to get definition of higher derived stacks in differential geometry? And uh, the second question is, do, do I now know how to define geometric structure on derived manifolds? So, so actually, I don't have very good answer to these two questions. I'm sorry. So I, uh, yeah, this is interesting questions. Um, now maybe we will study that in the future. So how, uh, so the first question, I think first question I haven't, I don't know. Uh, second question, how do I, the, how do I define geometric structure on derived manifold, for example, synthetic structures? Uh, so this thing, this derived manifold is actually can be considered as DG manifolds. So I think in principle, I can just use the construction of DG manifold, uh, where, where is my, uh, here. So here, the function algebra here, I have a CDGA. I have a CDGA. This is my CDGA. So in fact, this derived manifold, I can consider it as a, a manifold M together with a shift of CDGA like, like, like this, uh, like this. Then it becomes a, a it becomes a DG manifold. And this, this, this becomes a DG manifold. So in, in principle, the construction for DG manifold, you can just apply. Yeah, and there is like shifted, uh, the, simple, the differential forms on gradient manifold, DG manifold, and nice things, right? Any other questions? So, 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 so I have a question. It's over there to like, I, I meant like, uh, you were saying like, uh, so, so I, I meant, um, wouldn't your CFO also restrict on this, just, you know, this one step thingy? Uh, like uh, I guess uh, I guess uh, you are, you you were saying like uh, you were saying like weaker columns is not invertible, but I don't think that's a problem, right? Like uh, you you can use some spans, or, you know, the by by jet things to to still stop. Uh, you mean the weak equivalents? Uh, I meant like an an um, in. I, I mean, the CFO you were talking about later probably also restrict just to this one step derived manifold. Uh -huh. you, do you do you really need to go to go go to go to infinite infinite length? Oh, you mean if I have a weak equivalence between quasi smooth derived manifold? And uh, you think I have, uh, you think this diagram can be, can be in- Yeah, uh, I, I just I don't see, I just don't see why you, um, um, yeah, I just uh, don't see really necessary to go to uh, more steps um, to have the CFO. Probably your CFO, the category of fiber object probably restrict on this one step thing, wouldn't it? I, I don't know. I think it depends on your, what you need, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's sure. like in the step case, the CFO, the, the ECFO we have would re restrict on all the, like on the two group right, the one group right, in, in all fixed length, the CFO restrict on that. Okay. I think yours probably also restrict on, on just this one length, the, 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 the two step um, direct manifold. You mean, manifold. You oh. mean uh, oh, you mean this, this, this? Right, category of fiber object, right? You mean the category of quasi smooth manifolds is already a category of fiber objects? 
that's my guess. And also, you, I, I asked, uh, you explained why it couldn't be, but I think you, it's okay. Yeah, I think my guess is like, uh, they, they I are don't see, your I see structure. Uh, or, or you have like an obvious reason not to do it. That's a question. So I think the problem is this, uh -huh. the main problem is this thing. Uh -huh. So the main problem is this factorization. In this factorization, we really need to hire the one more. But, but isn't that you, you spend a lot of time to tell us what is the factorization within the um, two step? What, what you, uh, that, that, that thing you so, call it what? Quasi. Quasi smooth. So let me go back. So quasi smooth, quasi smooth here. Quasi smooth direct manifold, right? Exactly. So, so note that here, here is manifold. Right. And here, when we factorize this, we need one more quasi smooth. We need I see, it's one. over there. So you always have to go one, one step higher. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. Hmm. So okay, so that uh, yeah, so 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 for, uh, and you cannot find just within this category. Yeah, that's okay. very different um, than the the group by case. In the group by case, if it's the one group by, you can always find um, factorization just within the the one group by word. You don't have to go higher. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. I understand. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Okay, if, if not, uh, let's uh, thank um, Xuan Yi. Nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next week we'll switch to the Eastern, uh, Western time. Yeah.